Finally tonight, for more than a century, beer produced by Melbourne's famous Carlton and United breweries has dominated the taps at pubs around Victoria. But craft beers are growing in popularity and one inner city beer maker is trying to capitalise on that trend. He's battling to resurrect some old CUB trademarks and the fight is reviving memories of Melbourne's drinking past, as Danny Morgan reports. <laughs> At a small brewery in Brunswick, a group of beer lovers is turning up the heat on one of the industry's biggest players. The Thunder Road Brewery is taking on the might of foreign-owned CUB over some of Victoria's historic beer trademarks. Up to 70% of CUB trademarks have been challenged at the moment uh, and that's uh, a fight that we're prepared to have. It's a beer war. The labels include some that haven't been used for more than 100 years. We want to intentionally bring those back to remind people that there was a fantastic independent brewing history and attached to that was in tremendous fresh tasting beer. Enormous choice was available by city, by state and we're going to bring those beers back. But it appears CUB won't give them up without a fight. These beers are our beers, you know, um, they form a very important integral part of our history and our heritage. We brewed them and the concept that somebody who really has no association to the history uh, to these beers can come along out of, out of left field essentially and, and lay claim to them we think thinks is nonsense. The original label, Thunder Road uh, owner uh, Philip yeah. Withers is and relying on the trademark laws the use it or lose it provisions and as the lawyers slug it out the beer loving entrepreneur has his team of brewers reviving other 19th century Melbourne labels that aren't in dispute. Today we're making one of our specialty beers, the Montgomery's Pale Ale. But without the original beer recipes, some argue Thunder Road's historic brewing program is all froth and bubble. You're looking at certain beers that have got a history and heritage over 100 years and then just to say, hey, look, I've got the, the brand name and, and put some other beer that's not true to the original formula, to the original brew, I, I think that would, be, uh, that, that would be an issue with the public. Whatever the motivation, brewery historian Andrew Bailey says Melbourne's 19th century brewing traditions are worth reviving. There was uh, probably in the, well, the 1880s was pretty much the peak where there was um, probably 15 or 20 breweries that you could choose from. If you go into a pub you'd probably get, you know, you could have a, a Fitzroy Bitter or a, um, a Shamrock or a you know, McCracken's or something like that. In the 1880s, they were just starting to drink what's called um, a pale ale. The pale ale style became very popular and took over from what was called porter, which was a, a, a dark beer that was here from the 1830s when Melbourne was established. And the, the pale ale style sort of led on to a, a sparkling style when they invented aeration. In the 18, late 1880s, um, the German, German lagers were sort of around in Melbourne, but um, the American Foster Brothers came in and that's... Uh, that was the start of something a lot bigger. The wide variety of colourful labels at the time indicates the strength of the industry. They started putting beautiful gold ink and silver ink on them and um, you know, putting a lot of thought into the designs. And, and the, the beer, beer styles at that stage, I suppose, started blooming along and the labels followed them. But the good times didn't last. The 1890s depression led to a rationalisation of the industry. And not long after the turn of the century, six breweries, including Carlton, McCracken's, Shamrock and Foster's all merged to form CUB. Over the next 60 years, the brewery gradually swallowed up its local competitors to entrench its brands and used clever marketing to keep them at the top. A hard-earned thirst needs a big cold beer. And the best cold beer is Vic. Victoria Bitter. In recent years, though, the market for mass-produced beer labels has been in decline while the craft beer segment is flourishing. People are moving away from homogenised, commodified beers. They're moving to other, other, other products like wine, champagne, cider. Uh, here's the opportunity for the Australian craft beer industry or the Australian brewing industry to go back to the, the, the main objective, which is to give people, people likeable product, a really good quality, fresh product. CUB acknowledges the shift in the market and says it's responding. 
And we've just invested in um, a brewery in South Melbourne, which is a much smaller brewery that allows us the capacity to actually build, to run small run of these old heritage brands because we see it as a very important part of our on-premise beer strategy going forward. Publicans are also responding to the change in taste. In the past, CUB actually owned many of Victoria's pubs, or at least had contracts that tied up the taps with CUB product. Now, many publicans are declining to sign contracts so they can free up taps for locally made craft beer. Three years ago, the Great Northern Hotel in Carlton only sold draft beer from CUB and Coopers. It now has more than a dozen craft beers on tap. I think more and more people have been introduced to it and it's very hard when you sort of taste these good clean beers to go back to what you're used to and I think it's just a natural progression. Andrew Bailey doubts anyone can truly create the beers that Melburnians were enjoying in the late 1800s, even if they did have the recipes. But he's certainly happy a much wider variety of beers are now available in the city's pubs. We've gone to a sort of an hourglass thing where the, the, we had hundreds and hundreds of beers down to virtually lager a, a, and a pretty bland lager and now it's blossoming back out again and there's nothing to lose from choice. Danny Morgan enjoying his job there.